So, blogging is what we had said in an electronic journal. It really is a chance for a real estate professional to put themselves out there as an expert in their field, an expert in their area, an expert in whatever you're an expert in. You know what you do best. You know if you uh, do you know, new construction homes, if you're better at working with you know, exchanges, investor clients, whatever you are, you need to be the expert. When we talk about blogs for real estate, I always like to say, yeah, I heard a really great comment from a panel of bloggers, real estate bloggers. It's like sitting down at the kitchen table with your client before they ever meet you. Because you can address their concerns, you can talk about issues in the market, you can address prices in the neighborhood, you can address everything that's going on around in your conditions and they can read about it on a continuous basis. As far as you can maintain relationships with past clients, because once you have a client and you get them, you know, they, if you didn't get them through your blog, you can go, you know, I have a blog, or if it's somebody you sold to many years ago, sending them the link. Because automatically they can always keep in touch with you and kind of see what you are, but you don't have to always be sending them stuff. You don't have to be mailing to them, but they can know what's going on. And really, you can still be their source of information. One that I think is really, it's really cool. It's called The Real Estate Tomato. It has a really weird name. But it is a website that talks about how real estate professionals can use blogging in their marketing. So I'm going to pull it up right here just so you can get an idea. Like I said, it has a little bit of a strange name, but it is one of the best sites that I have seen that talks about blogging. So as you look through here, of course, who's the youngest real estate blogger? We look at it, and as you scroll down, you will see on the, on the columns over here, look. Blogging advice, content creation, organization, writing tips, all the do's and don'ts. It is a fabulous source for you. If you're the next one on here that I really wanted to show you is, is a real estate uh, agent who has a great blog. Her name is Teresa Boardman. She sells real estate in St. Paul. No matter where you're located, you need to be the expert in your area. So I just wanted to show you at least hers, though it's St. Paul. Some people out there, I think it's a great uh, sample that you can look at. Let's see here as we pull it up. She uses a lot of photos. She uses, uh, she doesn't write constantly, but she does write more, I think, than other bloggers that I have seen <coughs> because that's what she feels comfortable about. So you look at it, it looks like a regular old website. So here she's talking about the cop shop. Like I said, you can pick ideas that aren't necessarily only real estate related, but should be something within your community. So you can go through and search. I think the best way to know what to put on your blog is by looking at what's out there. Look at what the competition is doing. Look at what other industries are doing. Other industry information gives you a lot of ideas and gets your juices flowing to see how you can be different than everybody else in the industry. So I would take a look through. Like I said, she does all kinds of certain uh, pictures and she puts links on there. $10.99, all right. So it's all about it that you can take a look at and kind of get an idea of how somebody who I think has been doing a really good job mm -hmm. in the industry is using it as a tool. And the only other thing that I think that I heard that was a really great idea to use blogs for was all the questions, all the concerns, all of the things that your clients currently call you for all the time, write them down and answer all their questions via your blog. So when they are asking you those, you know, for the hundredth time, what, what is gonna happen in extra? What is, you know, closing costs? All these different things that people may ask you because they don't, aren't really quite sure, put them up on your blog. Because all your other customers are probably thinking it and they want the information and it's great ways for you to have content. So just list your questions. Language. Language is the question. If you have bilingual customers, Spanish, English, whatever other languages you service, I would say allow people, if they want to blog in Spanish on your website, let them. Because you're going to be hitting both markets. I would just let them. If you want to write in Spanish one day and write in English the next day, and you know your target audience likes to read in both, I would do it. it I just wonder, do you have the ability uh, to read and review and approve information before it actually posts? 
onto yes. the blog. Yes, because you can have, yeah, you, yeah, you don't want people posting up stuff that you don't know. Exactly. Yes, of course, it's how you set up your blog. You can give permission to certain people or you approve everything that goes up before it gets posted up. But if you're looking at the market of the future, you're looking at Generation X, and they want to see it. Latinos, Americans, Chinese, Vietnamese, all of the cultures that are Generation X want blogging and want great websites. It's not an option for you. 